Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James, and let's go over Season 8, Episode 1, Fear the Walking Dead, new season, last season. And is it good? Is it not? Will it be another Season 7? Let's check this out. There's a lot of opinions out there, but here's mine. You know, I, I watched it early. It kind of got leaked, I guess, uh, on Amazon Prime a little early. I watched it. I thought, you know, it's okay. And I even told some of you guys, it's okay. Give me a couple more episodes. I can tell you a little better about the season. But then I re-watched it before I did this review, and it's not as okay, I guess. As we go through the frames and I point out some stuff, there's a lot of little things. But overall, just the story overall, wishy-washy. Each character inside the story, the story as a whole to me is wishy-washy. You know, that Morgan uh, let his kid go, that, uh, you know, this happened and this happened. But then the characters themselves, each little individual story. There's one thing I think we might have learned that d we didn't really know or maybe we still don't know. But the way Mo and Dove and Madison and... And even Morgan and Grace, the way they talked about Padre, yes, Padre is a place, but it seems like Padre is the voice on the speaker. They keep saying, he, he's going to do this. You know, you almost killed Padre. Mo kept saying to Madison that she almost killed Padre. She almost got Padre. And I think that means the dude, the voice, not the place, the voice. It's a he, a person. The story opens up in the past, right, with Madison and Morgan Arriving at Padre right after, you know, they had left at the end of season seven. They jump the guards and everything. Madison knows she's going to be captured or killed, but at least Morgan can get away with Mo. And that's what happened. Madison was captured. Morgan got away. But we find out that Morgan gave Mo back. And Grace is okay with that. Morgan's okay with that. Morgan's okay to be a collector, even though he, you know, he told Madison on the boat that he only takes kids that don't have parents or the parents are willing to give them up. And Grace, she's, of course, some type of engineer. Uh, she worked at a nuclear plant. Then she's out there fixing radio tower stuff, repeaters and things like that. And Mo, because Morgan had escaped with her from the island and she was still a baby, but somehow remembered the walkers in the swamp. And that's what gave her pause when she tried to fight a walker. She was okay fighting a human when she uh, sparred against Dove. But she did have a pause that she didn't have at the end of the episode. Of course, she just walked up and she got rid of that fear of the walkers, that flashback thing. We did get a sneak peek scene a while back of Madison getting her blood drawn. People thought she had been bit, all kinds of crazy theories. But it, we still don't know exactly why her blood's being drawn every, each week. And they held her for seven years. You know, Mo's supposed to be eight, even though she's older, looks older, all that kind of stuff. Um, they held her for seven years, Madison. Like, that's a lot of, you know, uh, food, uh, upkeep, all this kind of stuff. Why keep her? Is her blood that important? Is testing on her, testing on her blood that important? You know, what was the real reason to keep her locked up? And then the wishy-washy back and forth... When they got out, uh, she got Mo out and got back to Morgan. Morgan calls in and says, hey, I found Mo. I'm going to bring her back to you. And they're like, well, get rid of uh, Madison. We don't need her anymore. But then at the end, when the boats came, they took Madison and said, don't worry. We still got use for you. Well, which is it? You don't have use for her or you do have use for her? But Mo ended up talking to Madison uh, while she was caged up. Of course, that little dilemma back and forth got... Madison out and Mo and they escaped the island. A lot of little things in there as far as when Madison did that sledgehammer thing down in the tunnels. What was that all about? I don't even, how does that even work? And they sure did seem to get off the island easy. They got a boat pretty easy. That all seemed a little too simple for me, but Madison escapes with Mo's help, I guess you could say. And Mo escapes with Madison's help, but Mo doesn't want to go. She's trying to radio saying, hey, I want to go back to Padre. I want to go back to Padre. We did get some things. It looks like Morgan kind of went into clear mode again or something. He wrote the things on the boat that Mo found. Seemed real easy. Hey, let's just scrape this stuff off the wall. Is that the first thing a kid would do? There must be writing behind this. Let's wash this wall off. But anyway, it looks like Morgan had been writing Jenny Dwayne. He wrote King County. So, you know, that's a little... I guess, teaser for what's coming as far as uh, they're going there eventually or something. But, you know, why was he in that mode again? He had kind of made peace with that, I thought. Grace sure did come out of nowhere. You know, both Grace and Morgan, they heard the chitter chatter on the radio and that Mo and Madison had escaped and stuff. So there they are. 
And it was on the beach right before the boats got there, of course, that Mo changes her mind. I don't want to go back now. Now I want to stay. I want to stay with you. You're my parents. And then Morgan and Grace both, when they first saw Mo, yeah, I'm your dad. Yeah, I'm your mom. But then on the beach there, she's like, I want to stay with you. You're my parents. And they both are like, no, we're not. We're not your parents. Which is it? So Mo is taken back to Padre. Madison is recaptured back to Padre. And they take Morgan. Like, okay, you're not a collector anymore. Now you're arrested. Get on the boat. And Grace is right there when all of this is happening. She doesn't even say anything. This is so unlike our characters. Yes, it's been seven years. There's a seven-year time jump. And I know this review even seems wishy-washy, back and forth. I'm all over the place. I didn't start from the beginning and just flow through each frame telling you how the story went and some thoughts on it. It's just a little screwed up to me. But like I've talked to many of you guys already, I'm, I'm trying to stay optimistic. I want the story to turn out to be better um, and get good. I'm hoping by next episode, it starts introducing more of the characters and the story gets bigger and everything's going to be a little bit better. And even in the early reviews, a lot of those guys saw the first three episodes and several of those reviews did say it gets better as it goes. So I'm staying very optimistic. And again, one other thing, and this is just my opinion, I don't like to showrunners. So at the end of the episode, I want to watch the inside the episode because maybe it'll give a little more details. Maybe it'll explain something. But it's Ian and Andrew, the showrunners. I just, they're so hard to watch, to see their face, to hear their voice, to see them talk, to watch their lips move. I'm sorry. I know a lot of you guys out there, you guys like fear and I'm just a a thorn in the side as far as never liking it since season four, the new showrunners. But that's my review or better said, I guess, rant. But you guys let me know what you think about it down in the comments below and I'll join you there. This is James in Nashville as always. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more dead stuff.